how you wanna play it. What a time to be alive. Today we'll be talking about Valorant, a game scheduled to be released by the summer of 2020, and why you should be keeping your eyes on this title. Whether you're coming from Counter-Strike, PUBG, Rainbow Six, or Apex Legends, any FPS gamer should definitely see what Riot has in store for us in the new future. I'm Sonic Kevin, and you can follow me on Twitch and the social links down below. Valorant, codename Project A, is a 5v5 objective-based hero shooter with a competitive focus right off of launch. Here's what the devs have to say about their target audience. We designed this game for a very competitive player at heart. You have to want to win, you have to want to master it, you have to want to get better, and if, if that is not you, this, this might not resonate, and that's okay. I think we're actually pretty comfortable with that, like this game not being for everybody, but at the same time, I think we, we want to be surprised by how many people it's for, and we want to make sure that we're talking to those players, and if they have pain points that are keeping them from entering into this game, that we're, we're, not, we're not ignoring them, that we're considering their needs as well. One important factor for a competitive is the 128 tick servers that they're using for Valorant, and the nature of higher tick rates and the back-end measures that they've put into place mean that Peeker's advantage is practically non-existent. This means that it will be more integrally fair for those peeking and holding angles during online games. Obviously, it won't beat a LAN setup, but this is by far the best that we've seen on paper from any game developer willing to build a competitive framework right off the bat. Hopefully, they will have an effective anti-cheat, and uh, knowing that it's Riot and their past experiences with League, we know that they are very, very adamant on their anti-toxicity measures as well, so hopefully that will be implemented properly. They can also implement a system similar to the Clash ranking system in League of Legends, where it's an online tournament-style competition where teams of five can compete. This would be a massive way of fostering that competitive audience that they're looking to appeal to initially. It should come to no surprise that content creators and pro players' opinions create a general consensus on whether or not a game is in a good or bad state, and this will indirectly affect their game marketing as well. To help with the public image, there are companies that have sponsored these people in other games to put on a good public face, even though that they might not be revealing the entirety of their opinions. There are multiple examples of this happening where, for example, Apex paid Ninja $1 million to stream the game on opening day, and the same can be said for many other games as well. Riot's lack of pursuing this sort of marketing and still having the genuine stats to support it just show how the majority of the market feels good and excited for this game overall. Also, the fact that it's backed by Riot, who has a history of developing and maintaining League's existence in terms of both overall player base as well as pro play, shows us a track record of what they are potentially capable of achieving with Valorant. One thing that I thought was interesting was how Valorant didn't pay a single cent for people to participate in last weekend's bootcamp. This was an exclusive playtest for certain content creators and pro players to try out Valorant and develop an opinion and create their own feedback and content based off their initial impressions. Knowing that it's really impressive how the feedback on Valorant has been mainly positive. Moving on to cosmetics, we currently know that all of the currency is used for cosmetic gun skins that provide no competitive advantage. And you can also unlock different colored tracer bullets, a new color scope, or an enemy death animation on the final kill of the round. There may be more types of customization added in the future, and whatever they end up adding, I hope that they don't add anything visually game-breaking. For example, recently CSGO has added agent skins to their CT and T models, where specific skins on certain maps can blend into the environment and be nearly invisible at first glance. Here is a clip demonstrating that. <laughs> He is back. Holy shit, he blended into so much. Oh my god. Who is that? Oh that. my god, that was nuts Wait, looking. He was now, although these skins might be cool, stuff like that doesn't align itself with the core values of a truly competitive game. 
I really hope that Riot is aware of this particular mistake that Valve has made with CSGO and can learn from it before it becomes an issue for them. Also adding on to the idea of competition, aim assist is not going to be a thing in this game. First of all, it's important to note that mouse and keyboard versus controller in games with aim assist are not competitive. It ends up being a psychological mind game about guessing who's using a controller versus mouse and keyboard and playing differently around the situation based off of that information. It's just simply irrefutable that no human, no matter how good their tracking is, can match the consistency that aim assist provides assuming that everyone is near the top of the skill ceiling of the game. A perfectly even playing field with everyone on mouse and keyboard is one reason why CSGO has maintained a competitive scene. In Counter-Strike, it is considered trolling or griefing to even play on a controller because those players typically cannot fulfill their role due to the inherent disadvantages of playing an FPS on controller when aim assist doesn't exist. And because Valorant won't have aim assist, that means controller players from other games will most likely have to switch to mouse and keyboard to play at a high level. This eliminates one more variable from the equation and evens the playing field for a competitive scene. Now the final question, is Valorant for you? If you're looking for a competitive FPS game to play, Valorant being packaged and prioritized for the competitive player base is a breath of fresh air. If you're looking to play at a high level, definitely learn to play on a mouse and keyboard if you're a controller gamer. Anyone can make the swap and improve as long as they have the motivational drive and put in the time and effort. For the casual player base, I think this will be an interesting game to explore, but overall the nature of the ranking system should provide them with games that also accommodate their skill level. Hopefully it won't be too long until the addition of custom lobbies is added so we can hold 10 mans for either practice or create new content. It's extremely disappointing to see that it's been over a year since Apex Legends has been released and it still has yet to release customs to the public. Now I want to ask you what you're most excited for in Valorant. Which agents do you think you'll main? Personally, I think I would be a Viper and Phoenix player. Let me know down in the comments below, and also don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you're new, and I'll leave you with Devin, who does a great job of summarizing my concluding thoughts on this game. There's so many factors that make this game a serious contender as an esport. It's a combination of the company. It's a combination of the times. It's a combination of the type of game it is. I just think this game is going to be absolutely massive. And like April 3rd is going to be insane. And for that reason, I think that Valorant will be one of the most successful games of all time. That, that is, my, that is my, uh, my, my genuine take on this whole thing. Good job. Then we know that side.